Welcome to Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your SmackDown results. 205 live results uh, from uh, November 21st episode. Okay, uh, we got happy birthdays uh, to the Bella Twins. They celebrated his 34th birthday on uh, the 22nd. Uh, they're also celebrating one year of their YouTube channel. Brian and Bree posted a, uh, this, a video thanking of fans. Did not get the link for that. Eli Elias Hampson turned 29 years old. Also on November 22nd, Skinner is born 1951. November 23rd, Alia, she was born 1994. And also uh, on the 24th, Beth Phoenix. She was born 1980. Former WWE superstar Kamala James Harris has been on life support after undergoing emergency surgery this past weekend in Oxford, Mississippi. Kamala's stepdaughter Juanita James on, uh, on Facebook noted that uh, he was showing signs of improvement on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, they noted uh, the, that Wednesday afternoon that a WWE legend is doing much better off and off the ventilator. Uh, Kamala is still not talking, but he is alert, according to uh, Miss James. WWE's website covered Kamala's condition with the following announcement. WWE legend Kamala undergo, underwent emergency surgery over the weekend. WWE.com has learned that Kamala a.k.a. James Harris, is currently on life support after undergoing emergency surgery this past weekend. The stepdaughter, Juanita James, provided fans with an update on Facebook saying, Please pray for my stepfather, a.k.a. Kamala James Harris. He had emergency surgery this morning about 3 a.m. They didn't think he, was, he would make it out of surgery, but God, uh, he's on life support. His buddy Coco Beware was there. And you can uh, catch a link there with a picture uh, for you. I got a link. Uh, during the Ring of Honor Survival of the Fittest House Show in Dallas, Texas on Saturday, Cody Rhodes put his Ring of Honor World title on the line against Christopher Daniels. The closing match saw Rhodes put Daniels through a flaming table, ECW style, from the one, two, three, and uh, got the one, two, three to retain the Ring of Honor World Championship. And the video of that can be found on this link. Uh, also noted uh, the, on SmackDown, WWE saw NXT superstars Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and Sarah Logan make their main roster debut with two different segments. They ended up taking out Naomi, Becky Lynch, Natalya, and SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. And here are some post-show uh, Twitter reactions from everyone involved. You didn't think I was going to let you girls on Hashtag Raw have all the fun, did you? Time to start a Hashtag Riot. Hashtag SD Live. And a picture of that, that, that link for you. Ruby Riot, uh, WWE. On number number twenty second, said that uh, this backwoods girl is in front of all your TVs now. Hashtag SD Live. Hashtag Wildling. Sarah Logan, WWE. On number twenty second, your only opportunity to make a first impression. Hashtag Hashtag SD Live. Liv Morgan, uh, Twitter account uh, at. You only live once. Ruby uh, Tuesday. I mean, uh, Ruby Riot WWE at You Only Live Twice at Sarah Logan WWE. I hope you can take a, a beating as good as you can give one. Payback as a mother. Hashtag fe Feeling Glow. Hashtag SD Live. Trinity, aka Naomi WWE. Said silly little kittens playing around. You got away with it this time. But you don't ever, ever interrupt one of my title matches ever again. Hashtag SD Live. And Natty by Nature on Twitter. 
I'm all about making an impression. I know you want everyone to chant your name, but anyone who thinks a sneak attack from behind is going to get you to the front of the division will bow down soon enough. Hashtag respect. Hashtag SD Live. Videos of Natalia reacting to the interference, which ended with she and Flair laid out. Natalia ranted about the new blue brand superstars costing her the match, saying they're nothing but disrespectful and she will not stand for it. We found this link and uh, Natalia said that she will get her rematch with Flair. And Miss Charlotte WWE also uh, tweeted, uh, I'm not the kind of person you want to make an enemy at Ruby Riot WWE at you only live once. Ask your girl at Sarah Logan WWE. And a, a picture link to that one. On Twitter. A uh, video from that on Twitter. Uh, Becky Lynch WWE. Twitter reaction to last night's sneak attacks on SmackDown. From Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, Becky Lynch, Naomi, Natalia, and SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. <coughs> and even more. Tweets from Tamina, Carmella, Lana, who welcomed Ruby, Liv, and Sarah to the Blue Brand. Lana WWE, these are three women who know what they want, and I know what they need to succeed on hashtag, hashtag SD Live. Welcome at Ruby Riot WWE, at Sarah Logan WWE, and you'll only live twice. Uh, Tamina commented at Tamina Snooker. You young girls better watch whose locker room you step into. This isn't a little girls game. Hashtag SD Live. And can be found at that link. Miss Money in the Bank. Carmella. WWE. I can't say I don't like their attitude, but let me give you a piece of advice. Stay away from me. In my gear, drawer, etc. Hashtag SD Live. Well, WWE has dropped the first names for Eric Rowan and Luke Harper on their official roster pages. As noted, Rowan and Harper returned to TV and uh, from Monday night's Motor City event, but uh, they did not use their new names. They went with their old names, but the new music they did go with. As their t SmackDown tag team name is the Blu uh, Bludgeon Brothers. Uh, of course, they defeated the Hype Brothers both live and on SmackDown too. Autobiography for WWE legend Vader has com been completed and will be released around WrestleMania 34 next year. According to PW Insider, the book was co-written by Kenny Casanova, who worked on the autobiography for Kamala. And is also working on upcoming books for Danny Davis and Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Ed Leslie. WWE Studios and Sony Pictures Worldwide Acquisition to Partner on the Marine 6. Close Quarters. Starring WWE Superstars The Miz, Becky Lynch, and HBK himself, the WWE Hall of Famer, Shawn Michaels. From Burbank, California. WWE Studios and Sony Pictures Worldwide Acquisitions, SPWA, today announced that the two studios will partner again to release the upcoming action film, The Marine Six Close Quarters, which is another reason why Miz lost the championship last week. The Intercontinental title and Roman Reigns now has it, or actually won it on, on mon Monday's episode of Raw, which you can uh, view on, on the Monday Night Raw video. Uh, directed by James Nunn from Marine 5, Battleground, Eliminators. The film will feature WWE superstars of Miz and Becky Lynch and WWE Hall of Famer Shawn Michaels. And is set to begin production starting November 27th in London. When Jake Carter, his character is a Miz, and fellow Marine Luke Trapper, Shawn Michaels, stumble upon a kidnapped girl being held prisoner by a dangerous gang of international criminals, Hmm, that must be a good tag team. They find themselves in the cross uh, air, air as they try to save the girl and bring her kidnappers to, ju kidnappers to justice. 
The Marine series continues to deliver action-packed entertainment to our fans. And we are excited to partner again with Sony Pictures Worldwide Acquisitions and director James Nunn to bring the Marine 6 close quarters to a global audience, said Michael Luisi, president of WWE Studios. The motion picture debut of the, of the talented Becky Lynch and the addition of Shawn Michaels to the series alongside The Miz is sure to bring the excitement and action to the next, next level. And the film is written by Craig Walensiak. WWE is currently planning 14 day, was it 14 pay per view events for next year, 2018. Five Raw brand events, four SmackDown brand events, and five co branded events. According to PW Insider, Money in the Bank will now be a co branded event. And here's the current pay per view schedule for 2018 January 28th, Philadelphia. Royal Rumble, February 25th, from Las Vegas, Elimination Chamber, which is Raw. March 11th, from Columbus, Ohio, Fast Lane, SmackDown. April 8th, from New Orleans, WrestleMania 34. May 6th, Newark, New Jersey, Backlash, Raw. May 27th, Baltimore, Maryland, Payback, SmackDown. June 17th, from Chicago, Money in the Bank. July 15th from Pittsburgh, Battleground, Raw. Uh, uh, August the 19th from Brooklyn, SummerSlam, co-branded, of course. September 16th, San Antonio, Extreme Rules, Raw. September 30th from Nashville, Hell in a Cell, SmackDown. October 21st, Boston, you got tables, ladders, ladders and chairs, will be a Raw brand. And November 18th, Los Angeles Survivor Series. December 16th from next year, San Jose, Clash of Champions, SmackDown. Speaking of Clash of Champions, I believe that they are doing a rematch. Jim Hall does get his rematch against AJ Styles. Well, we got an interview uh, from Two Man Power Trip, Triple Threat Podcast. Was uh, as we move forward to Wrestle Wrestle K weekend featuring the franchise. Shane Douglas dives deep into his shocking shocking betrayal of the uh, of Tommy Dreamer at last weekend's House of Hardcore 35 event at the ECW arena, as well as gives us a look into the possible future of another incarnation of the Triple Triple Threat faction with Brutus Magnus. A.K.A. Mickey James' husband from TNA and Joey Mercury, formerly of Eminem. Mercury, Morrison. Also, Shane com comments on the rebrand of the NWA and current champion Tim Storm, and whether or not the franchise will challenge for the belt he threw down 23 years ago. Full episode. Go to TMP. TM. PT.com. Uh, he comments on his shocking uh, turn on Tommy Dreamer at High School Hardcore 35. The world is made up of good and evil, and everybody has their own take, and everybody thinks that they are on a good side, and a very few select group of us will admit that we came from the dark side. In the overall scheme of things, Tommy Dreamer and the franchise are opposite characters. One is a saint and the other one is a sinner. And just like Paul Heyman had done years ago in ECW with the idea of putting Shane Douglas and Tommy Dreamer on a team, to me, that just screams out that there is something going to happen. These two don't ju just don't mix and they are like oil and water. And for what was a pretty important show of how House of Hardcore and I was proud to be a part of it and like I said to the media at the end of the night it looks like we may get a second go around from the same building after nearly grabbing the keys to the kingdom 20 years ago to be in that world Shane Douglas the franchise and Tommy Dreamer there ain't nothing there ain't anything about the two that mixes perhaps a new triple threat forming 
uh, such as uh, jo Joey Matthews and Magnus. Let's be clear that it is neither one of these guys is a sports entertainer. Both of them, and when I look at the, them, are professional wrestlers. So to be given the opportunity to align myself with these guys with a lot of mystique and mystery on what I was doing with my fingers at the end of that match. And here is a point that it is until you see the three fingers raised overhead. You cannot say tri triple threat, but I can't think of uh, two more qualified guys to be in that position. On the most important show in the House of Hardcore history, I am proud to have been part of that and stake my claim to Tommy Dreamer and to the House of Hardcore and all the fans that I am not going any place. And I am staking my claim because I put that building, ECW Arena, on the map. And I am going to make dang sure that this goes to the next level. Any comments on the NWA Championship coming back to the ECW Arena at House of Hardcore 35? For the first time in 23 years, some of the production crew said that Billy Corrigan would like me to say something about this and go on camera to do that. I turned Vince McMahon down to, to do a DVD and talk about that incident for the same exact reason that I turned Billy Corrigan down. To me, NWA belt throwdown was something that made a huge impact on professional wrestling, and it was ECW stating its claim to everything the NWA had been and any more than that I think Vince McMahon has a right to that legacy. Do I think that Billy Corgan or anybody has a stake to it too? Where I made my mistake, I've kicked myself in the butt a ton, of, a ton over the last 25 years, is that I should, should have destroyed the dang thing. I should have, been, have taken it back home and throw it in a river or run it over with, with, with a truck. The NWA legacy was dead and gone at that point. Now the big curveball and the X Factor in all of this is what will Billy Corrigan do with this NWA? His champion was there at House of Court, and we said hello, and it was a respectful hello between us, but you could tell it was awkward for him, and I am sure it seemed awkward for me. To me, there are certain things that you lay claim to proudly, and others you hope to hope the people look over at them. And for me, the NWA title throwdown is something that I wear like a badge of honor. And what we did, and what achieved for ECW at the time, and ultimately we failed. But dang, we came close to grabbing those keys to the kingdom, closer than anybody else did, and that is closer than a Panda Energy. Back company did closer than Time Warner. Back company did, and ECW being that little company in that filth infested bingo hall with the craziest, most insane fans on the planet came with a, with a hair's breadth of grabbing the keys to the kingdom. Any plans on changing or of challenging the NWA champion so he can finally get rid of the belt? As of now, that there are, there are no plans on my table. I made that statement 23 years ago, but I am sitting now and looking back at the thing that Terry Funk did in ECW and how he went about his business and doing that at 53 years old and at the same age I am now in ECW. I'd be a liar if I told, told you that is not something that has passed through, through my brain over, the, over time and I have not, nothing personal against NWA champion. He seemed like a great guy and looked to be in phenomenal shape, but clearly something that if that were to happen, it won't happen until the things are equal. The franchise is working on a ton of other things and nursing a few injuries, and if there were any, any challenge made for the NWA title again, it would, be the, it would be next week or next month. It would be when I know the cards are stacked in my favor. Well, Saturday night and, and flag that I planted in the building that I made famous if I am going to do that. Then he, he came dang well, you can, he can dang well bet that, that if the franchise is going to challenge for the NWA title, that he is going to get it. 
into the best shape that he can get it in. And it won't be to carry the NWA title. And it sure won't be for me to mount it and put it in my office. I will do what I should have done 23 years ago and do away with it once and for all. As though the Okay, that was the end of his interview. Also uh, noted, 2K Sports announced that uh, WWE 2K18 NXT Generation Pack is now available as a download content for PS4, Xbox One, and Windows PC, not for PS3. Enabling access to playable NXT superstar Alistair Black, Drew McIntyre, now Raw star Elias, Samson, Lars Sullivan, and Ruby Riot. And you can check out a trailer for the DLC in at 2ksports.com. Dark match before SmackDown tapings and uses saw WWE UK champion Pete Dune and uh, Mandrews, who's go going as Mark Andrews now, defeat Tyler Bate and Trent Seven in a battle of the WWE UK superstars. SmackDown opened up with a look at the main event of Sunday's Survivor Series pay-per-view. Live from Toyota Center in Houston as Tom Phillips welcomes us to the show. He joined in with Corey Graves and Byron Saxon. We go right to the ring and out comes SmackDown Commissioner Shane McMahon. Shane says Team SmackDown was so close on Sunday, but they came up short. Shane says his sitter, uh, his sister and her husband will try to spend this, but SmackDown proved, even in defeat, that they will be called the show from now on in WWE. Shane talked about how he's proud of the of Team SmackDown members for bringing it, but it's not just for just Survivor Series. They bring it each week. Shane says they do it every week, except for two individuals. Then he calls out Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens hit the ring. Owens and Sami hit the ring and mock Shane. They want Shane to say he, he's sorry to them. Shane tells Owens to shut his mouth. Shane then says Owens and Sami have no respect for anyone else in the locker room. They also don't respect Shane or anyone in the crowd. Sammy agrees. Sammy and Owens go on about how valuable they are and how Shane can't fire them. Shane says they're delusional and asks how delusional they must be to think that they're the top two superstars in WWE. Shane then says the entire SmackDown locker room hates their guts and has no respect for them. Shane call, calls them most self-absorbed, crazy, Mega, mega low, like mega low maniacs that have ever stepped foot in the WWE ring. Uh, Shane just has two words for them. Your, as the music is erupted out, comes SmackDown General Manager Daniel Bryan. Bryan says Shane has every right to fire these two, but he should first put his personal feelings aside. Over oh, the same, we talk about how reasonable Bryan is. Brian tells Sammy to shut up. Brian says he has a better temporary solution instead of terminating their contracts. Brian says everyone in the back does hate their guts and he has to send Randy Orton home over threats Orton made about Owens and Sammy. Brian says that the New Day is also furious at them. Brian says that they have a chance to prove that they can beat anyone on any night when they face the New Day tonight. Sammy says... That's totally bogus and unfair because there are three of there are three of them. Brian tells Sammy to shut up, shut up again. He wasn't finished. Like Shane said, everyone in the back hates Sammy and Owens and wants to get their hands on them. Brian announces that the SmackDown the roster will be around the ring as lumberjacks tonight to prevent Sammy and Owens from trying to escape. Brian's music hits and the Yes Borgasm chant starts for the crowd. Sammy and Owens are not happy. Still to come segment, Charlotte Flair defends against Natalya. Also, WWE Champion AJ Styles will be here to address a challenge from Jinder Mahal. We see Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable backstage. We also see the Usos. Match commercial. Well, we get Jay Uso versus Shelton Benjamin. Back for the break. Out comes Shelton with Chad Gable. SmackDown Tag Team Champions. The Usos are out next. The bell rings and Jey Uso locks up with Benjamin, who takes it to the corner. They lock up again and Shelton takes Uso back to the corner and Uso ducks and decks him. Shelton then drops the Uso, 
Jay Uso with the shoulder. Uso fights back, but Benjamin nails a jumping knee. Knocking Uso from the ropes to the floor. Jimmy Uso checks in on his brother as we go to commercial. Back for the break. Jay tries to fight back, but Shelton keeps control. Jay finally hits a small drop and a running shot, but Shelton goes to the floor for a breather. Gable gets on the apron, apron to distract and faces off with Jay as Jimmy runs around and pulls him off. They tangle and Gable sends Jimmy into the barrier. Shelton hits the ring and goes at it with, with Jay. Jay hits the super kick for a close two count. As Gable tries to get involved again, but Jay takes care of him. Uso comes off the top, but Shelton counters. Shelton, uh, Shelton hits pay dirt for the win. After the match, Shelton rolls to the floor and leaves left with Gable. Arms raised in the air. Jay recovers that ringside with Jimmy. Well, looks like they might be getting a title shot in the near future. Uh, Owens and Zane are backstage talking with Baron Corbin, trying to make sure that they have a friend in their corner tonight. Corbin smiles and asks, what's in it for him? Owens says, sticking it to Shane feels good and is more about principles. Corbin says he can't stand either one of them, and they should find someone else, someone more weak-minded. They walk away and run into Bobby Roode. Sammy asks if Roode wants to be someone in WWE or just another of Shane's puppets. Owens asks Rude if he wants to stand out and be different like them. During tonight's Lumberjack match, Rude asks if they are out of their minds. He was in the match that they ruined up on Sunday. They ruined it for Rude in the entire Smackdown, Smackdown locker room. Rude says he will see them both out there tonight. And he owes both a receipt. We get a quick teaser for the Bludgeon Brothers there we get, uh, there, as they will be in action. Later on, back to commercial. Back for the break. Naomi is getting her makeup done. When Ruby Riot from NXT appears, she wants to introduce two of the, her friends to Naomi, Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. They be, beat Naomi down to destroy her. Becky Lynch tries to make the save, but she gets taken out as well. Referees fi finally make the save and call, and call for a doctor. Shane McMahon backstage talking to uh, Daniel Bryan. Saying he didn't know Brian, no Brian was bringing women from NXT, but that's awesome. And booking the lumberjack match for tonight was genius. Shane talks about how Brian's way is is the best, and he's cooled down. But we'll be going to the hotel to kick up a seat before he does something drastic tonight. Hype Brothers versus Bludgeon Brothers can be found in this link. We go to ring out comes Zack Ryder and Mojo Rawley. Match commercial. Back for the break, Hype Brothers hit uh, wait as Eric and Luke make their returns as the Bludgeon Brothers. Rowan starts off with Mojo and runs him over. Harper takes out Ryder on the floor and sends him into still ring steps. Mojo tries to mount some offense, but he gets put away with a double team move and pin for the win. After the match, Rowan and Harper stood tall in the ring. Dr. Fentez backstage with Natalia. She calls... The appearance last week by WWE Hall of Famer Ric Flair discussing and is confident going into tonight's match with Charlotte Flair for the title. Back to commercial and we get a look back at Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles from Survivor Series. We go to the ring. Out comes WWE Champion AJ Styles. We see the post Survivor Series video of Paul Heyman praising AJ Styles. Fan champ for AJ as he waits to speak. AJ says he wishes he could be out here celebrating after slaying the beast at Survivor Series, but it didn't go down as he wanted. Not because he didn't try, because he hit Lesnar with everything in the book. AJ said Lesnar is every bit of, of the beast as we thought he was. AJ then talks about getting post-match texts and messages from people saying he held his own. AJ says this is WWE and you don't get trophies or second place, but he wasn't the one limping after the match. As Brock was always selling a possible injury. AJ says if Brock ever wants to have a rematch, he should just remember that Rocky got the win in the sequel. Then AJ says enough about Lesnar and Survivor Series because this is SmackDown, the house that he built. AJ says he's a little salty because someone said that they would take the title from him. Jinder Mahal. 
AJ takes off his shirt and, and lays the title in the middle of the ring. AJ challenges Jinder to come to take the title from him. Jinder appears on the big screen and says he, he does this on his time. He's too busy to come, go, come to the ring because he's watching the match with Lesnar over and over. Jinder says AJ took advantage of him two weeks ago and he was preparing for the beast. Jinder says if he would have faced Lesnar, he'd be standing here tonight as the Beastmaster. AJ knocks Jinder for being off the Survivor Series card and tells him to bring it. Modern Day Maharaja says he will get his rematch when he wants it. Jinder then says AJ is a disgrace to SmackDown. They will clash, but it will be a place more deserving than Texas fans boo. Jinder says he will be invoking his rematch clause at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view on December 17th. As Jinder laughs, as AJ looks on, the Singh brothers suddenly hit right, the ring and attack AJ. As AJ takes out so, uh, Sunil and then Samir, as Jinder watches on the big screen, AJ fights Samir into the ring until uh, while Sunil is down on the floor. AJ stares at Jinder before hitting a style clash on Samir. AJ raises the title and as his music hits, Jinder reminds him of their match at the clash. Sami Zayn and Owens are backstage again, still looking for someone to help them. They hear Aiden English, English singing. They walk up on Aiden and Rusev. As Sammy and Owen try to get Rusev and Aiden upset at the new day before walking off. So to come segment again. Natalia vs. Charlotte back commercial. Back from the break we get WWE Shop Christmas segment with the Usos. Well, SmackDown's Women's Title Match, Natalia vs. Charlotte. And we go to the ring out first coming to Natalia. SmackDown Women's Championship Charlotte Flair was out next. We get formal ring introductions from Greg Hamilton. The bell rings and Natalia goes right at, right to work on the champ. Flair goes right back and drops her. Flair with chops. Natalia hits the discus clothesline and goes for a sharp shooter, but he ends up sending Flair face first in the turnbuckle instead. Natalia stands tall as we go to commercial. Back from the break, Flair delivers a big elbow to t turn the momentum around. Flair unloads in the corner as fans count along. Natalia ends up nailing a sit down power bomb for a close two count, and fans are chanting for, for Flair now. Natalia goes for the sharpshooter again, and it's locked in. The hold is broken, and Flair ends up dropping Natalia in the corner. Flair climbs up for the big moonsault, but Natalia gets her knees up. Flair hits the spear, sending Natalia to the floor for a breather. Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and Sarah Logan appear at ringside and destroy Natalia for a disqualification finish. So Natalia wins. After the bell, fan champion NXT as the three continue to beat down Natalia on the floor. Flair watches for the ring. They stalk Flair now. The three hit the ring, but Flair fights them off until the numbers game catches up with her. They take turns on Flair and lay her out before standing tall with their arms in the air as we go back to the commercial. Back for the break, we'll see what just happened to end the title match. Dasha Fentez approaches Brian backstage, but has no comment on what just happened. Or will Sammy approach Brian next? Or will that they are going to get ripped apart tonight because the whole roster is jealous of their success. Sammy says firing them after the match will be the biggest mistake Brian ever made. Brian wishes them good luck and walks off. And we get the Lumberjack match next. The New Day versus Sammy Zayn and Kevin Owens. Back to the ring for tonight's main event. Out comes Shinsuke Nakamura. Smackdown Tag Team Champions, the Usos. Bobby Roode, the Ascension. Ty Dillinger, Rusev, Aiden English, the Col both Colognes. Uh, Chad Gable, Shelton Benjamin, Sankara, Mike Canellis, Breezango appeared. And U.S. Champion, Baron Corbin. They all surrounded the ring as Lumberjacks. New Day without first, go to commercial. Back from the break, out comes Sammy and Kevin Owens. Big E starts off with Owens as they lock up. Owens goes behind, Big E tosses Owens. Owens with a headlock. Kobe ends up tagging in for a quick double team. Kobe gets sent to the floor, but the Lumberjacks leave him alone. Sammy and Owens yell, yell at him. Kobe returns to the ring, and Sammy tags in. Kobe blocks a uh, cheap shot, but Sammy drops him with a shoulder block. Fans are chanting for Nakamura as Kobe runs the ropes and for a back elbow to Sammy. Kobe with a one count. Sammy tosses Kobe to the floor, but the Lumberjacks let him go back in on his own. Sammy and Owens aren't happy. Sammy comes to the floor, but the Lumberjacks attack. 
Then throw it back into the ring. Kofi follows up. Sammy tries to run up the ramp, but the lumberjacks stop him. They bring him back into the ring. Toss him back in as we go to another commercial. Back from the break, we get new uh, and a new day. Does the unicorn stomp on Owens in the corner? Kofi with a two count. Owens looks to turn it around. Kofi ends up dropping Sammy on the apron, but he turns around to a super kick from Owens. Owens unloads on Kofi and talks to trash. Sammy comes back in and works Kofi over while showing off some. Sammy drops Kofi with a clothesline for a two count. Owens hangs back in and drops Kofi with a headbutt in, in, in the corner. Owens with more offense and another pin attempt. Big E finally gets the gets a tag. He unloads a buzz and hits a, a pair of belly belly suplexes on Sammy. Big E then runs the ropes and hits the splash on Sammy. Fan chant for the new day now. And then Sammy counters the big ending and sends Big E back into the corner. Kobe then tags in and comes off the top with a big crossbody for a two count. As Owens breaks up the fan fall. All four go down in the middle ring. Kobe sends Sammy over the Over the top ah, to several lumberjacks. Corbin charges Sammy, but Sammy moves and he hits Rude. A big brawl among, among the lumberjacks breaks out now. The brawl goes into the ring as chaos breaks out. Lumberjacks fight back out of the ring, out to the floor. Woods knocks Canellas to the floor. Owens drops Woods. Kobe comes from behind on Owens, but Sammy comes from behind on Kobe and rolls him up for the win. After the match, Big E and Owens face off at Face off a ringside. Rusev nails Big E from, from the side and lays him out. English joins him. Owens runs away through the crowd. Kobe leaps from the top and takes down Rusev and English. Sammy tries to run away through the crowd too, but Woods stops him. Woods rolls Sammy back into the ring and the New Day surrounds him. Sammy pleads with him, but they tri triple team him. Kobe hits a triple, triple, triple in paradise on Sammy. Big E scoops Sammy. While Woods goes to the top for the midnight hour. Uh, New Day stands tall as a, and talks trash to Sammy. As the music hits, we go to replays. We see Owens approaching Brian backstage. Brian asks if Owens is at all concerned about what happened to his partner. Owens is concerned, but he and Sammy want to know about their jobs. Owens begs Brian not to fire them. Brian says Owens doesn't have to beg. He was never going to fire them. Brian says he does recognize their talents. Which is why he wants him here next week for a one on one match with Randy Orton. Owens ch changes his mind and thanks Brian, walks off, and SmackDown goes off the air. 205 Live starts off with an early, uh, earlier today video of Enzo. As Enzo uh, got matches for Noam Dar, Tony Neese, Ari DeVere, as they stand in front of a Thanksgiving meal. Galak shows up in the Gobbledygooker outfit. Dances for a minute. Enzo isn't impressed. What? I thought you wanted me to lighten up. Enzo also mentioned if anyone really impresses him there tonight, there might be a title shot in the future. Tony Nese versus Mustafa Ali tonight, along with Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander versus Noam Dar and Ari DeVere. Drew Gulak versus Akira Toazawa. Street fight. Reporter Magic Gulak says he hangs with Enzo. So, by proxy, he's from the streets, too. Galak continues on with his PowerPoint presentation. He can't even get to it, though, as Toazawa heads out. Galak gets off uh, to a fast start and works Toazawa's arm. Toazawa with some stiff kicks and chops. <laughs> fakes and a chop and, and fakes a chop and throws a straight punch in the face. Hurricane Rana boots in the face. Suicide dive. Attempt, but Glock catches him and hits a suplex on the ramp. Glock then continues to work over his opponent on the outside, throws him back in the ring, jabs him with a with no chance sign, pin, two count. Glock tosses a few chairs in the ring, sets up in the middle of the ring, sets him up in the middle of the ring. He hits Soazawa on it, then slaps him, goes for the pin, but he kicks out. Glock set, sets his sign in the corner. Glock tries to put him through it. But Torozal fights it off. Glock ends up getting a backdrop driver through his own sign. Torozal heads out and grabs a table from under the ring. Glock cuts him off at the pass. Suplex in the corner. Pin for a two count. Glock sets the table up. Action spills to the outside. Torozal 
tosses Galak over there. Now Sable then launches himself off, hitting a cannonball senton. Towards all grabs a kendo stick and a garbage can from under the ring. Puts the can over uh, Gal Galak's head and starts swinging baseball style with the kendo stick. Then Galak puts up on the table, still stuck in the garage can, uh, the garbage can. Sent on splash through the table for the one, two, three. No to Torazawa wins by pinfall. Nigel McGinnis announces Hideo, Hideo Tommy is coming to 205 Live. We get a victory over his time in NXT, showing off clips from his matches. Backstage, Enzo is with Nice, the very Dar again. Enzo wants his guys to stay focused or they will be off the Zoe train. In comes Cedric Alexander, Rich Swan, Masaf Ali, who make fun of the other group. This one wonders what kind of guys Enzo is keeping company and says they will just embarrass him again. Masaf Ali versus Tony Nice. Nice does some posing before the action starts. Both, uh, both nail some moves, uh, strikes uh, until Nice finally gets his opponent grounded. Ali using his speed to send Nice to the outside. Heads up to the top rope. Hits a cannonball senton that l lands cleanly. Nice attempted to uh, leave through the crowd. Ali stopped him. Ali then jumped on the barricade, but got dropped on, dropped on it by Nice. Nice put put his shoulders and and dropped Ali face first on the announce table. Action back in the ring. Ali in the corner. Dots is a charging knees. Ali hits a uh, couple running chops. Another dodge in the corner. Ali rolls into the ring and hits the face buster. Pin for a two count. Ali with a clothesline. Knees ducks it. Ali ho hops up to the second rope. Hits a tornado DDT. Pin for a two count. Knees recovers. Throws Ali's he head into the ring post. Running knee. And that'll do it for the three count. Winner. By pinfall, Tony Nice. Backstage, Enzo hanging with Dar and DeBerry. and says he'll be hanging in their corner during tonight's match. Glock is back in the Gooker outfit. He needs to use the bathroom and is apparently in timeout. Enzo says no. No, I'm Dar and Ari DeBerry with Enzo versus Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander. Enzo on the mic does his usual, how you doing stuff? My name is Enzo Amore. I'm certified G in the both of set. Then you can't teach that. How you doing? But it keeps, uh, keeps it short. The Swan and Alexander head out. Alexander and DeVere start things off with DeVere showing off his power. Alexander doesn't let that go long. Enzo ch uh, chattering at ringside. As the crowd starts to shut up. Enzo chant. The star is in the ring with Swan. Alexander with a blind tag springboards in and drops star. Goes for the lumbar check, but Dar counters. Big strike, pin for a two count. DeVere and Dar able to cut the ring in half and keep Alexander down as Dar knocks Swan off the apron. Alexander looks to tag, but nobody holds. Dar goes for a pin for a two count. Alexander really getting beat up now by DeVere and needs to get a, get, uh, get a tag. Alexander able to fight off both opponents and finally gets a tag. Swan on fire with a bunch of strikes. Catches the very on the top rope. Hits a nice hurricanrana. Swan hits to the top, but Enzo crushes him. The very goes up top. Hits a frog splash. Pin for a two count. Enzo starts yelling at the very that he can't get the job done. So, comes in Dart. Swan surprises Dart with a pin. Uh, gets on the top rope. Hits a hurricanrana. He heads up to the top. Enzo crushes him. The very goes up top, hits the frog splash, paying for the two count. Enzo starts yelling at the very and he can't get the job done, so in comes Dar. Swan surprises Dar with a pin, two count, kick to the head. Enzo distracts the ref, Alexander pulls Enzo off the apron and goes to beat him up, but Dar baseball slides him away. Swan then knocks out Dar with a kick, Phoenix splash for the one, two, three. Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander won by pinfall. After the match, Enzo immediately jumps in the ring, starts beating, beating on Swan and, and Alexander. His group continues to beat down. Ali and Torres all run down for the save, but Galak and Nice show up. 
and put that save to a halt. Into a stable stands tall as they, cru as they crush the other group. Into hits a big splash off the top rope. Gets on the mic and asks Swan and Alexander, how you doing? As 205 goes off the air, Dark Man event after 205 Live in Houston. Saw WWE Champion AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Bobby Roode defeat Jinder Mahal, Rusev, and U.S. Champion Baron Corbin. And that concludes my results for SmackDown and 205. Thanks again. Peace out. See you in one more video. If you don't know, just comment, brothers and sisters.